Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about practical planning today. I've given out this worksheet quite some time ago, so I hope you guys have attempted it. Most of you have already marked the worksheet and given back to you. Uh, however, there are some classes where I did not collect this worksheet from you. So let's take a look at question 13. When light is incident on the front of a photo cell, an EMF is generated. So basically, the EMF means voltage. Now, a student wishes to investigate the effect of adding various thicknesses of glass in front of the photo cell. You can vary the number of identical thin glass sheets between a light source and the front of a photo cell. It is suggested that the voltage V is related to the number of glass sheets N by the equation V equals to V naught E minus alpha N T. Where T is the thickness of one sheet, alpha is the absorption coefficient and V naught is the EMF for N equals to zero. Design a lab experiment to determine the absorption coefficient of glass, meaning that they want you to find the value of alpha. Now, you should draw a, a diagram to show the arrangement of equipment. Pay particular attention to the procedure, the measurement, the control, the analysis, and the precautions for the safety and accuracy of the experiment. So now we've got to find alpha. So straight away, uh, we know that we will need to vary the number of the glass sheets and measure the voltage of the EMF. Now, how do we draw the diagram? The diagram will be drawn as follows. Now on the left side, we will have to have a lamp connected to a battery, connected to a variable resistor and an ammeter. And on the right hand side, we will have the glass sheets, the photo cell connected to the voltmeter. Note that for the diagram, uh, a torch light is not enough. Now, because uh, the torch light is no way to control the intensity of the light, which needs to be kept constant. Now, you know that, you know, when using a torch light, you can't tell whether the battery is going to die. You know, what if you use a torch light and the light is flickering? Now, so the only way to control the intensity of the light is to have a circuit that allows you to control the current and measure the current as well. So you must control and measure the current uh, in the lamp. Now, on the right hand side, okay, uh, the photo cell uh, must not have a battery attached to it. Because if you have a battery attached to it, the photo cell already generates its own voltage. The battery, the voltmeter will not be able to distinguish whether it's the battery's voltage or the photocell uh, voltage. So basically the photocell generates uh, its own EMF. So all you need uh, is a voltmeter. Now you can also draw other things uh, such as a retort stand uh, to hold the glass sheets together or you can have a ruler to measure the distance between the lamp and the photocell. So these are the things that you can draw in your diagram. It's only worth one mark, so please don't draw too much. Now, um, over here, the examine the, the model answer starts off by writing the aim. Uh, please note that the writing this aim does not get you any marks. So it's just a way for this particular examiner to get started on his uh, write-up so that he can get his uh, creative juices showing. So generally what I'll write is that I'll generally write set up apparatus as shown in the diagram. That's how I start my, my practical, all right? I don't write the aim actually. So here are some of the procedures. Now, first off, the examiner wrote that perform the experiment in the dark room to avoid the ambient light. Now this is a reliability measure, okay? So you must perform the experiment in a dark room. Okay, you must say do this in order to prevent this, okay? So uh, if you just say that do the experiment in a dark room, you don't get any marks. Now next, you need to measure the thickness of one sheet of thin glass using a micrometer screw gauge or vernier caliper. Using a ruler to measure thickness is not allowed. Now, next you can measure the thickness at different positions of the glass sheet and average the value. This is also a reliability mark. Before starting the experiment, check if the EMF reading is still obtained for the maximum number of glass sheets. 
if not adjust the distance between the light source and the photocell. This is called the preliminary reading mark. Now the preliminary reading mark, uh, pre sorry, pre prelim uh, pre preliminary results mark, okay, preliminary testing, is basically to see if whether the uh, dependent variable, okay, varies a lot significantly uh, or whether it is measurable given a certain uh, independent variable range. Now, so basically you're saying that if I use this many glass sheets, can I still measure the voltage or is it like completely blocked? Or maybe you even need to use more glass sheets because the glass is very transparent, all right? So uh, basically what you need to write is uh, before starting the variable, uh, before starting the experiment, okay? Uh, you just uh, check whether you can get a voltage reading and whether the voltage reading varies substantially with the number of glass sheets used. If not, right, increase the number of glass sheets. All right, now next. So this is, uh, the thing is that we're going to measure the record, the voltage using a voltmeter. So remember to always uh, mention that whenever you uh, measure what using what, okay? So you must always measure something using something. Now repeat four to five by increasing the number of identical thin glass sheets for six sets of reading. This will get you a basic procedure one. Now next, control of variables. You should write at least two or three control variables. Over here to keep the distance from the lamp to the photocell constant using a meter rule. So keep what constant by using what, okay? So that is the thing that we need to write. Now over here, keep the intensity of light constant by ensuring the air meter readings is constant, okay? So you can say that keep the intensity of light constant by checking the current to the lamp using the ammeter and if not you, you can adjust the real step to keep the current constant okay so this is what you must do in order to keep the current to the lamp constant now so please take note torch lights are not allowed because you can't uh, keep the torch light constant. So because there's no such real step or uh, ammeter that can measure the intensity of a torch, so really the uh, torch lights are not allowed. Okay, vary the real step and checking the ammeter reading or voltmeter reading to ensure the intensity of light is constant. This is to account for the overheating of the lamp. So this is the reliability mark number five. Okay. Now let's move on to the analysis of data. So given this equation, V equals to V naught E minus alpha and T, you can write ln V equals to minus alpha and T plus ln V naught. Now most of you got this correct. A plot a straight line graph of v, ln V against N. You can also plot uh, ln V against NT. All right, so you can also plot ln V against NT. So you can determine the gradient alpha using alpha is the uh, negative of the gradient of the graph divided by t. Okay, so you can also write that uh, uh, negative alpha is the gradient. If you're using nt, if plotting against nt. Okay, now safety and accuracy, there's only one uh, safety and accuracy mark for this uh, segment is do not look directly into the lamp to prevent eye damage. Now, also accepted um, if you say that uh, handle the glass, the thin glass sheets uh, carefully to prevent uh, breakage from breaking as they can cut uh, if they, uh, it, as they are sharp uh, and can cause injury if broken. 
Okay, so you can also say the thin glass sheets. There isn't anything else, uh, and irrelevant or insub insignificant things like don't touch the lamp because it's hot, uh, is probably not accepted. So I would I would say that not accepted, uh, will be things such as, uh, don't uh, touch the lamp if it's hot, right? Um, that's these are kind of stuff that is uh, very uh, common and uh, not particularly uh, uh, important or realistic. So things like wear gloves uh, when handling glass or, or when uh, might get uh, electrocuted by the battery. Uh, so these are these are all not reasonable. Uh, so they won't be awarded any marks. Okay, so let's take a look at your uh, the final mark scheme. Now this mark scheme is for you to tick off to see uh, which uh, marks you're supposed to get. It may not be listed in order of uh, writing. Okay, so you won't be writing your practical according to this mark scheme uh, because the mark scheme is not the model answer. So over here, if you get a diagram with a lamp, glass sheet and photocell in line, voltmeter across photocell and workable lamp circuit with power supply, you get one mark. For basic procedure by increasing the number of glass sheets six times, you get BP1. Using micrometer, screw gauge or vernier caliper to measure thickness of glass, you get M1. Measure voltage using a voltmeter, get M2. Distance from the lamp to photocell constant using meter rule, get C1. Intensity of light constant by measuring the current using the M meter, get C2. Plotting the graph of ln v against n gets a1, and alpha is the gradient, or gradient divided by t gets a2. So most of you got this uh, two marks correct. Um, dark room to avoid ambient light interference gets r1. Uh, measuring the thickness several times at different places and averaging the result gets r2. Doing preliminary readings, or uh, preliminary results, to see whether the number of glass sheets that you have will give you a change in the intensity and the vol voltage, that's R3. Um, there's one thing which wasn't written is that you make sure that you use a protractor or you get the maximum voltage by making the torchlight shine directly at the photocell, that's R4. Using a rheostat to control the lamp intensity, that's R5. Okay, so prevent burns. Well, okay, this one uh, accepts the do not touch the lamp during experiment, but actually I would say that this is not a very good uh, example. Uh, eye damage from intense bright light. This is an example. Okay, do not look at the source directly. Reasonable method to prevent cuts from glass. Use gloves when handling glass sheets. I don't think that's reasonable, but be careful when handling glass sheets. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, other further safety considerations such as don't touch the electrical circuit with wet hands is unreasonable uh, because that's a very basic safety precaution. Okay, so that's it for uh, the first of your planning exercises. The next planning exercise you should do should be the uh, EMI planning exercise, question 18. All right, bye-bye.